Hello there everyone, my name is Rekvi and welcome back to some more Let's Say Professor Layton and Pandora's Box. We're currently on the Molentary Express trying to find out more information about the Elysian Box as Dr. Schrader rode this train somewhere so it might be connected. It's really our only lead and we just went to the observation deck because, uh, well, why don't I let Layton tell it? Yeah, we are gonna head back to the dining car because we, uh, kind of want to eat and earlier when we visited Babette of course you know interrupted us took our place so let's see if there's some room available now so let's head back here now and ah Chester okay good there's some seats free for us now finally and enough choices huh good I like it when there's plenty of choice you know it means there's probably always something that you can like and oh some commotion you call this how kissing i call it slop are you telling me you serve this to our customers i'll make something more up wow he is a uh, really angry at macaroon he's just trying his best that's not nice and the talk about tacky pictures so he's not happy with the food nor with the interior design even though it's like world quality art apparently well, luckily uh, Chester and Macaroon, they know how to deal with the boss and they just say like that they'll take care of it. But yeah, he does seem very bossy. It is a shame, isn't it? Oh, but Layton has a pretty interesting puzzle for us related to a work of art. The drawing below is made up of curved lines that intersect to create sections. If you want to color in the entire canvas so that no section touches a section of the same color, what is the fewest number of colors you can use? You can use a color as many times as you like, as long as it doesn't touch a section with the same color. Once you have your answer, touch input answer and enter the number of colors. So. What I like for this to do with this one is basically just mark all in one color. Like say say we're going to use X. X is a color. And uh, we're just going to see how many we can mark. For example, we can mark this. Um, and then we can also mark this one because while it's uh, connected through an intersection here, it's not a line. Because only if it's uh, neighboring by a line does it count as a neighboring. So we can use this one. Uh, as well as this one, this one. I'm just going to do it uh, pretty quickly and not really say it for everyone because it, it should be pretty obvious which one we can and can't do. Uh, there we go. That should work. Uh, what else? Uh, well, this is, of course, still the same, but just let's put it across there so we can see it a little bit better. That means that this one and this one should all be good, as well as this one. And... Is that all of them? Uh, no, this one too. This one. And I think that's all that we can do. So now uh, now we're going to color in the next one. And we'll do a dash for those. And that means this one too. Um, oh wait, this one could still be a cross. So good. Um, this one needs to be a dash, 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 uh, dash. And then we have everything but this one. And it both aligns at a dash there. And an X here, so we need a third color for this. So three colors should be plenty to do it with. Just leave it to me. Piece of cake. And uh, here you can see a map. If if my crosses didn't really do it for you, it shows you uh, yeah yellow, blue, and then red for that corner piece. Ah, thank you, Leighton, thank you. But yeah, a meal after a good puzzle is always a nice. And they're going to tell us now about um, some puzzles will disappear. So if you get too far into the story, if you miss out on any, don't worry. Because they will be moved to Granny Riddleton's shack. I'll shut it off in just a little bit. But uh, right now they're going to show you if you missed any puzzles up until now. We haven't. But if you missed any, you can find those in Granny Riddleton's shack. But uh, yeah, we uh, had a pretty nice meal and uh, now we're going to head back to our carriage. But you know what? We should really foot the bill first. You know? Was it to our liking? Yeah, it was excellent. Very excellent indeed. Oh, yes, the bill. Of course. 
Ah, but you forgot our order. Oh, I mean, we could just lie and say that we barely had anything, but let's be the gentleman. Let's be honest about Luke's big dinner. Luke, are you sure you can really eat all that? You put in quite an order there. No problem, Professor. I'll clean my plate and still have room for more. It's no wonder the Professor is concerned, as Luke's order cost twice what his own did. Below you can see all the items that the two ordered, along with their prices. Touch the prices of the items that Luke ordered. Now, what I like to do with these kind of puzzles, it says that uh, Luke's order costs twice as much as what the Professor did. So first, if you sum all of these numbers, you know the total price of their meal, which is 105 pounds or dollars or whatever currency you would use. Now, that, that means that if we divide that by 3, it's 35. So Leighton's meal costs $35, whereas Luke's costs $70. So that just means that we need to find the items that together sum up to 70. Now, uh, we can do that by doing 12, 16, and 17. That gives us um, 45. And then uh, adding this 25 should put us at 70. And that leaves these other three items, which is 27 plus 8 is 35. That makes sense. That should be good. This should do the trick. And there we have it. And uh, there you can see it. So yeah, once you know that it's uh, 105. And I, I like this little flavor text like, Are you sure you didn't order too much? Nope, this slurp stew is great. And the steak is chomp chomp delicious too. And yep, Leighton's just speechless. Ah yeah, you're, you're welcome, no problem at all. But uh, yeah, he, we're just gonna have to sit back and enjoy. Uh, but before that, what's this glass doing here? They didn't like clean the table properly. I mean, yeah, it's luxury and the dishes are first rate, but they shouldn't be on the table after the people leave. But yeah, this glass. Ah, nice etching and, well, of course that leads to another puzzle. Stacked glasses. The owner of a four-star restaurant assigns a young waiter the task of stacking glasses in a decorative way. Eager to please, the waiter immediately draws five separate designs and shows them to the owner. The owner takes one glance at the designs and, with a look of irritation, turns to the boy and cries, this design is preposterous. What were you thinking? Which of the five designs is the owner talking about? Now, on first look, you know, some of these might be like, oh yeah, A, like there's no way you could balance that. But this is not an issue of balancing. What you need to remember is that they are glasses. So, uh, while it's drawn just like this, a glass also has a top there. And uh, that really doesn't seem to be much of an issue if you look at B, you know. Those could all have tops, perfectly fine. C as well, uh, E as well, you know. But this one here, this one, uh, let's clear that. Look, look at that. Those rims go right through those glasses. That's, that's not possible with glasses. So D must be the preposterous design. Again. And yep, there it is. You can see it a bit better what I meant in the picture here, but you you can't just ram it through the glass. His his drawing was basically giving him the wrong idea. Ah yes, uh, let let's uh, stay away from that. You know what? Macaroon kind of got yelled at pretty badly. Let, let's see how he's doing before we go back. Uh, are, are you okay? Uh, that was bad. Yeah, I'm sorry that you had to go through that. But apparently he uh, blows up like that quite normally, huh? Well, that's uh, no fun at all. Yeah, it sucks that you have to put up with bullying like that. I guess uh, he is a businessman, he did make it to what it is today, but still, you know, be a bit nicer maybe? Ah well, 
we're going to take a look at some more uh, dishes. And uh, this time it's the plate. The plate in front of you bears a mark made up of two equilateral triangles, one inside the other. Can you work out how many times bigger the large triangle is than the smaller one? Now, on first sight, you might wonder, like, how could I possibly do this? But it's really not as tricky as it sounds. Okay, so if we pretend to flip this uh, middle triangle um, vertically, then we would get a triangle that's more or less shaped uh, like this. Excuse my crude drawing. And what you can then see, if we outline the big triangle, now my drawing is a bit crude, but the idea is that we basically get a triforce, uh, upside down triforce, with four equal sized triangles. If that this then is one of those four, that means that it's one fourth of the size, or the big one is four times larger. And there we have it. Just flip it around and it should be pretty easy. Even though my drawing was a bit, a bit um, sketchy to say the least. But yeah, we do have an eye for this sort of thing. But <laughs> I suppose he would just uh, complain about everything. With that said though, let's uh, head down now. Let's just go back to our room. Because we, we could use some rest, couldn't we? Oh. My boy, my sweet little boy, you've got to do something right this instant. Search the entire train. What, what is she on about now? Uh, Chelmy's on the train too, huh? So, uh, yeah. Well, well if it isn't late and... Well, a missing child... Huh, I don't... Can you guys remember any kids around? I haven't seen any. Yeah. Oh, but he wandered off and he hasn't returned. Well, he should probably be somewhere on the train, shouldn't he? Uh, I, I suppose uh, we should help and look then. Yeah, we can uh, aid in their search. Because, uh, yeah, more people looking out will definitely help. Like, this is the nerve of her. Are you still here? Like, we're offering our assistance. We don't have to do this. There's no need to be this rude. Okay, but all we have is that there was some shoe and the name is Tom. And uh, that that's all she really says. So we have this tiny, tiny shoe. It fits in Luke's palm. Like, that is tiny. It really is tiny. Hmm very puzzling yeah it, uh, that that does surprise me don't kids learn to walk until a bit later hmm interesting but we have mystery number five Tom's disappearance while riding on the voluntary express Babette's little boy Tom managed to disappear if the shoe he left behind is any indication Tom must be a very young child where could a child that small have wandered off to on his own? Well, let's start the search. But uh, first we can uh, talk with Chalmy here. Uh, yeah, what, what brings you here? Oh, you found his diary. Ah! So, he was planning on going on this train, huh? Well, that's good to know. That's definitely good to know. But, uh, he apparently changed his priority. Not to the doctor anymore, but to Tom. Well, that's fair enough. I, I suppose, you know, finding a missing child can still prevent someone missing. Whereas, you know, the doctor apparently, or not apparently sadly already passed away so there's nothing really that can be done to prevent that anymore so i understand that that would have a bit less priority but uh apparently we have some um an infamous reputation with chalmy and uh, he wants us to prove our puzzle solving powers by solving the shoe shop thief 
A woman in a shoe shop pays 50 or no, pays for a 30 pound pair of shoes with a 50 pound note. The salesman doesn't have enough change, so he goes to the shop next door to break the 50 pound note. Returns to his shop and gives the woman her change. A while later, the shopkeeper from next door storms into the shoe shop. It turns out that the note he gave her was a fake. The mortified shoe salesman gives the shopkeeper 50 from the till to apologize. Neither the customer nor the shoes she took are found. In total, how much did the shoe shop lose? Now, you might very quickly overestimate this number. What we know for sure, uh, if we draw a memo, is that the shoe is gone. The 30 that we paid for the shoes, or the worth of those shoes, are gone. That woman took those shoes with her. Um, but she paid with a $50 bill. So that would mean that we would have a $20 lead, right? Well, no, because we um, went over and exchanged that $50, the fake $50, with the other shop. So from the other shop, we got a real $50 for a fake $50. But later on, we gave a real $50 back. That means we didn't actually lose anything in the exchange with the other shop. Because first we got real 50 pounds and then we gave real 50 pounds back. So that's no net loss. That's a breaking even. We still lost the 30 from the shoes themselves. And we lost 20 more in change that we gave to the shop thief. Or to the shoe thief. So we lost 50 pounds in total. All to the one uh, lady who stole the shoe. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. And uh, there you can see it again. The shoe thief stole 50 from us in total. And we just lost 50 but we also gained 50 from the other store so that evens each other out yeah our fame isn't undeserved not at all but he's gonna search for tom alone and uh, we'll have to search do our own search because he doesn't want to work together apparently oh well that's uh that's his loss let's head down now and uh Who's this? Let's let's ask some people. Maybe someone has seen Tom. Yeah, have you seen a small boy with just one shoe on? Hmm. No, not not a sign of a boy, huh? Hmm. Okay. Oh. While we're on shoes, you have a little predicament. Do do you, huh? Puzzle 18, the shoe maze. Here's a maze that's made up of shoes. Your task is to travel from the start point to the goal. You may only travel horizontally or vertically one space at a time, and you must alternate between left and right shoes every step. Also, you may not pass through any of the walls in the maze. Though, touch each space, space one at a time to highlight the path you want to take. If you make a misstep, you can deselect that space by touching it again. So this is a pretty interesting puzzle. Now we know that we need to end on uh, this uh, left shoe. So we can't possibly go down because that's another left shoe. So we would have to take this right shoe. Um, now again, you know, this is another right shoe. So we, we're forced to basically take this part here at the start because we just don't have any other options. So far so good, we're just basically forced to take a pot but here is where our first choice comes in we could either head down or we could head up so um i'm well well we need to eventually go down uh if we notice um that doesn't really seem to lead us very well because then we have several in a row that are all the same and we couldn't possibly go further there so instead we want to head up here and then make our way over to the left. And then we can make our way down from there on. And that works out a lot better. Unfortunately we can't go left here. So we need to take this right path. Downward and around. And with that we should have the entire puzzle solved. And now to test my theory. 
Aha, wonderful. And that's it. Some fancy footwork. Huh, we do have quite the brain. Thank you. And uh, with that, I'm actually going to end off the episode here. So thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, then consider subscribing below for more Professor Layton content in the future. And, you know, maybe leave a like down below on the video. That always helps motivate me. Having said that, thanks again for watching. And until next time.